Hello, we are excited to present our presentation, the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative, Building Spaces for Collective Care and Collaboration, a project by the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative. My name is Molly Buckley Marudis from Cleveland State University, and I am extremely happy to be here with you today. I'm my co-author, uh, Shelley Rose. I'm an associate professor in teacher education at Cleveland State. I'm focusing on adolescence literacies, digital literacies, and teacher education. Hi, I'm Shelley Rose. I'm also from Cleveland State University and super happy to be here presenting with Molly Buckley Maridis, my co-author. Um, I'm an associate professor of history at Cleveland State University. I specialize in social studies, education, and digital humanities, as well as gender history and world history. So first off, what is the teaching, the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative? First, we're a working group for research, reflection, and support for pandemic pedagogy and beyond. We were founded in May of 2020 as a, as a way to reflect on the shift to emergency remote learning. And then the, the project has grown from there. It has become an academic blog, which you can see at cleteaching.org, which features at the moment, 25 case studies and at the end of the spring 35 case studies of reflections of educators from across the pre kindergarten through higher education levels, reflecting on their teaching and learning experiences during the pandemic. It is also a resource referatory, which grew out of the case studies of the original cohort. The referatory has over 845 entries of resources that are crowdsourced, um, basically open access and open educational resources that educators can use to create and enhance um, remote, in-person, hybrid, high flex, all kinds of learning experiences. We've also become a professional development arena for instructors for all levels. We host um, regular open discussion meetings where we write into the meeting about various topics. We have a monthly Assignment Design Cafe, which brings together campus partners at Cleveland State University from e-learning, um, the Center for Faculty Excellence, the Center for Instructional Technology and Distance Learning, and the library um, to, to help educators brainstorm about educational design and instructional design. We're also a partnership between higher education instructors and pre-kindergarten through 12 educators in Northeast Ohio. And by that, we're forging a connection between institutions of higher education and also um, public schools, parochial schools across the region, which is something that is unique to our project and what we're really proud of. For our project history, you can see a visual history of our project at this link, cleteaching.org slash history, and basically see how our narrative is unique. Um, all all um, COVID projects have a unique history. And so you can see ours at this link. Great. Uh, thank you, Shelley, for giving that overview of the project and its many components. The last thing we really want to highlight today um, would be some of our findings. So we have right now three particular findings that we have started to write about, we think about regularly, and we hope that this session will open up a conversation about some of the things that we're seeing. The first finding is something that we have come to describe as collective care. And for us, collective care is really an emergent concept from this work, and it reflects care in three different ways. So the first is caring for one another. And by this, we mean as professionals, as educators, and as humans, really by being engaged in all the things Shelley just mentioned, by the writing and talking and thinking of this group. Um, the second, component of collective care is that we see this as a group that supports and works to develop pedagogies of care. Um, so really explicitly, we're seeing a commitment to finding ways to develop teaching and learning practices that are really rooted in and committed to caring for the people that they're working with, um, whether that's really early childhood students or students in graduate school or levels. And the third kind of collective care we see is that it's a group um, that believes educators and educational institutions are better off when we do this work together. And this has been unique. It's something we've known for a while, but by seeing so many of the silos come down and working across contexts and divisions and program areas, this has been something really important to us. 
The second finding you see here is risk taking. We've really noticed that really by being forced into the emergency pandemic teaching, um, it led all of us to take some risks and be willing um, to fail in some of the things that we're trying just by nature of, of being asked and required to try a lot of new platforms and new many new instructional approaches. Um, and we think this is really important and healthy for improving teaching and learning um, and working as a group. Um, in some ways, it's lowering the bar. A lot of times in education, we want to wait till we have a lot of time to practice something before we give it a shot. And this work is showing us it can be really helpful to just try something and be willing to fail and learn from it. The third finding really encompasses all of this work um, that we've been doing the last year, which is an, a commitment or a recommitment to thinking about humanizing pedagogies, but also humanizing technologies. Um, we've noticed, I've talked a little bit about the pedagogy angle, but from the technologies perspective, the work with re the referatory has really illuminated all of the different ways that some of the vocabularies we use um, to organize and sort and curate the data often become restrictive or inclusive or exclusive. And so we're working to really think about how do we humanize the different places where we're hoping to support collaborative authorship, collaborative thinking um, and collective work across the group and across different um, grade level bands. So where is the CTC going next? Um, tied directly to the humanizing technologies conversation, we're hoping to reimagine the Omeka referatory that, as Shelly mentioned, has over 845 entries. So we're working to, to really build out a collaborator-friendly homepage, create a project-specific controlled vocabulary and metadata schema, and create more opportunities for collaborator curation. Um, the second place we really hope to grow and expand in the coming months is in the area of our communities and workshops with a real focus on the post-pandemic teacher. And that takes us to the end. Yeah, thank you, Molly. And then this last slide, we just wanted to list all of the amazing collaborators we've had in our leadership and for graduate assistance since we started. Um, the project has not reached its one year anniversary yet, which is surprising. And yet um, we owe a great debt to all of our um, clean teaching collaborators and participants, um, almost 75 participants at this point. So thank you all. And thank you for listening to our presentation. Thanks so much.